Let's sing the first, second, and the fourth of Just Over in the Glory Land. seated. Turn to page 353 when we all get to heaven. 353, we'll sing the first and the fourth. for you many blessings Lord, we want to thank you for another new year lord we pray that you'd be with us this year and god that would resolve in our heart lord that would try to worship you more closely and, and live a life according to your will god we ask you that you'd forgive us of our sins and our many failures in life and god that you'd bless us as a church lord that we'd be a light on the hill that lost boys and girls, men and women, Lord, might see you, and Lord, that they'd be saved by your wonderful grace. God, we ask you that you'd go with us in this service, Lord, that you'd anoint Steve, anoint him afresh, Lord, that he might just preach your word, and, and God, that we'd be submissive to your will. 
We pray for our missionaries. We we pray for each prayer request, Lord. We pray, Lord, you know the need in each family and each home. And God, we just ask, Lord, that you'd be with them. Strengthen them, Lord. And Lord, bless this offering, Lord, that it might be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom. Now go with us, blessing the song service and the priest hour. And Lord, we'll give you the praise and the honor for it all. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Page 240, page 240, I love to tell the story.
thing that I want to, we've been, as Larry mentioned, it's us. Just a young boy in the temple one day shared with the doctors they were so amazed never had they seen so young speak so swift they asked him many questions conversations went like this on my mother's side my name is jesus but on my father's side they call me emmanuel on my mother's side now i'm 12 years but on my father's side i've just always been on my mother's side i'm from bethlehem but on my father's side is new jerusalem on my mother's side i'll be crucified but on my father's side in three days i'll arise and i'll sit at my father's side he was the son of god yet the son of man and i can't help but wonder how Joseph must have felt through an open door that day he heard his son reply and he said you see I'm king of kings on my father's side on my mother's side my name is Jesus but on my father's side they call me Emmanuel on my mother's side now I'm 12 years but on my father's side is New Jerusalem on my mother's side I'm from Bethlehem but on my father's side is New Jerusalem on my mother's side I'll be crucified but on my father's side in three days I'll arise and I'll sit at my father's side Amen. didn't they do a great job with that song it was a blessing Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, 2015, here we are, a new year uh, that's come about, and uh, it's a, a genuine blessing to be in the house of God uh, this morning. And I want to ask you to pray for the next few minutes as we share with you what God's laid on our heart for this service. And I ask you to turn to the book of Zechariah, if you would, chapter number 13. Zechariah, chapter number 13. I'd like to read a verse out of the book of Zechariah. Uh, Zechariah, if you'll go back and you'll do a little bit. We've been doing in our Sunday school class, we've been doing some uh, studies uh, in, uh, we've been doing some studies of the major prophets and minor prophets and just kind of getting an overview of what each of those prophets, what their message was, their time period uh, that they, they were there and and uh, who God directed those messages to. And uh, Zechariah, if you'll study it out, Zechariah and Haggai, uh, the primary message that they had uh, was to encourage uh, the rebuilding of the temple uh, at Jerusalem. You can go back in the book of Ezra 
and uh, look at chapter number 6 and you'll see uh, both of these individuals mentioned there uh, in regards to rebuild, the rebuilding uh, of the temple in Jerusalem. Uh, Zechariah's prophecy, if you'll go back and, and you'll look in Haggai chapter 1 verse number 1 and also Zechariah 1.1, 1, 1, uh, you'll find that uh, Zechariah's prophecy was two months after uh, Haggai's prophecy. And that, so there was a two-month time period uh, between these two. Uh, if you'll look in the book of Zechariah also, some uh, verses that are very uh, familiar to us, if you look in, uh, in Zechariah chapter uh, number 1, and if you'll look down uh, in verse number 3, we find this verse. It says, Therefore uh, say thou unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Turn ye to me, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will turn unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. And so it was, it was a call to turning back uh, to God. And I tell you what, if we can look in this verse, if we looked in verse number 3 uh, this morning, what a message uh, for the United States of America today uh, that could be brought from that one single verse in Zechariah chapter 1, uh, verse number 3. Also a very familiar verse out of the book of Zechariah is found in chapter number 4, uh, where in verse number 6 it says, Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, uh, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. And those are some very familiar verses uh, to us out of the book of Zechariah. I want to read one verse out of chapter 13 and just share with you what God's laid on our heart. Uh, studying the book of Zechariah, in the first six verses, there's eight visions uh, that are given, some pictures there. And uh, Zechariah's prophecy looked down uh, through time. And it was not only uh, directed toward the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem, but it even looked further beyond that uh, to the Messiah King uh, that would come. And he talked about uh, that. And I want us to look at one verse. If you are able to do so, would you stand uh, for the reading of God's Word uh, this morning out of the book of Zechariah, uh, chapter number 13. And I want us to look uh, at verse number 6. I'm going to read uh, just a few verses here, but uh, the thought comes out of verse number 6. In verse 6 it says, And one shall say unto him, What are these wounds in thy hands? Then he shall answer, Those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, and against the man that is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered, and I will turn mine hand upon the little ones. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, It is my people. And they shall say, The Lord is my God. I want you to notice in verse number 6 especially, it says, One shall say unto him, What are these wounds in thy hands? And he shall answer, Those with which I was wounded, in the house of my friends. As we look in this chapter, and we look in verse, if you go in verse number 7, it talked about that the Lord of hosts said, Smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. If you go over in Matthew chapter 26, Jesus told the disciples, says, This night you're all going to be offended because of me. He says, Far as it is written... Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. So there's no doubt uh, who's being talked about here in the book of Zechariah. But a question is asked in Zechariah chapter 13 verse 6. What are these wounds in thy hands? 
And the answer was, those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we bow in Your presence. And we thank You for the day. Thank You, God, for the blessings of this life. Thank You, God, that You've given us an opportunity to gather back in Your house here this morning. And Lord, I want to thank You for the songs that have been sung here in this place. And thank You, Lord, for Your presence, Lord, we felt here uh, in our midst. And God, we're so thankful that You loved us enough that You gave Your only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We're thankful for Your precious and holy Word. And I thank You, God, for Your Word that was taught in our Sunday school classes uh, here today. And God, I thank You, God, for this place. And Lord, we know that You have established this place. And we realize that as we gather here today, that we are gathered on holy ground. And Lord, we come today and we desire, uh, Lord, that You'll meet with us as we come uh, to worship You in spirit and in truth. And as uh, Diane said this morning, we praise You. And God, we praise You. Why? Because You are worthy of all of our praise. And we stand and we lift our hearts uh, before You today and praise and honor You and thank You and glorify You for all that You have done and all that You are doing today and all that You're going to do in the days and the weeks ahead. And God, we thank You for loving us and thank You, God, that You, uh, Lord, have given us this opportunity today. Pray that You'd lead God and direct us in everything that as said and done in Jesus' name, and for His sake we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. You think about this. It talked about, in this verse, it talked about what are these wounds in thy hands. And He said, these with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. You know, you can tell a lot about somebody just through their hands. You know, when I was growing up, when I was 11 years old, I started helping my dad every summer, and we'd work. And I started helping him every summer, and I'd work when school let out, I'd work till school started back all summer long. And as I grew up and got older, you know, I didn't understand a lot of that when I was, I was growing up. But when I grew up and got older, I under, understood a lot more. And I appreciated uh, that fact. But I've always had, and people will come up to me and they'll ask me about these places uh, on, uh, two of my, on both my knuckles and my hands and their calluses. And uh, I had calluses on my hands uh, at a young age. And it was from work. And people would ask me about those calluses uh, on my hands. I think I thought a lot about my mom's hands. And I used to watch my mom as she would be in the kitchen and she would uh, be standing there and she'd be making biscuits. And how that she'd take those hands and she would fix that dough and she'd get everything all mixed up and she'd spread that out and, and man, make some of the best biscuits that you've ever uh, put in your mouth. I've thought about my grandmother. And my grandmother used to, when the gardens come in every year, she would make chow chow. And she never gave anybody the recipe to her chow chow. And we'd try to get it, you know, every year as she got older. But she'd get up 3 o'clock in the morning (laughs) and she'd start making her chow chow. Nobody could get that recipe. And she went to her grave with that recipe. I mean, she did. But I thought about how many times that she got up and she'd, do, she'd get all of that and use her hands and do that. I've thought about individuals that we've met down through the years and people have come up and they'll give you a good, firm handshake. And you know, you'll meet them along the way and you can just tell something through an individual's hands. You can tell something about that individual. I begin to think this week about Jesus and just about His hands. The Bible said here in this Scripture, there's a question that is asked in chapter number 13, verse number 6, and that question is, what are these wounds in 
thy hands. And I went back and began to look at Scripture in the Gospel accounts and how that Jesus, on different occasions, how He used His hands and the the effect and what took place uh, when He used those hands. And there's three things I want us to look at and just consider this morning as we begin this new year uh, together. And thinking about the hands of Jesus. The hands. I thought about growing up and how that, you know, it seemed like that I could get around my mom and I could just feel her hands. You know, she'd come up if I had a skint place or something that, that seemed like that, that just her touch was, was amazing. When I was growing up, I had the croup. I used to have the croup. I liked to have died a couple of different times. Uh, from having the crew. My mom would stay up all night long. She'd build a tent over my bed and she'd stay up all night and run a vaporizer under that tent that I could breathe and that I'd last through the night. Seemed like that the night time was the worst time. But I remember a lot of times how that mom would reach inside there and, and she would just touch me and I just knew that everything was going to be all right. I just knew that. I want you to think about the touch of Jesus this morning for just a little while. I know that probably every one of us in this building is we're we're experiencing some things in our lives. We're going through some things. Maybe we've experienced some things this last year that's really been amazing. There's been miracles that's happened this last year. You know, there's individuals sitting in this building that have experienced a miracle this past year. Some that, according to what man would say, they'd scratch their head and they'd say, how in the world are they still walking around? Some have gone through some things that that if you looked at it, you'd say there's absolutely no way that they'd ever make it through that. But you know what? They've experienced a miracle Some of you sitting here this morning in this building, you've experienced miracles in your life. Some of you sitting here, you've had family members that have experienced miracles. You've seen what's taken place and what's happened in their lives and you've seen those miracles. Some of you sitting here this morning, you've prayed for miracles to happen. And maybe the way that we wanted that miracle answered, that didn't happen. But you know what? You've also experienced a miracle. Huh? You think about it. As we look through Scripture and we see in the Gospel accounts of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we can see the life of Jesus. And there's several things that just kind of stand out in Scripture concerning His touch or His hands. Now I want you to think about these hands. The the question was asked uh, uh, once again, that what are these wounds in thy hands? And I want you to think about the hands of Jesus for just a moment. The Bible tells us, if you'll go over in the Gospel of Matthew, and look with me in Matthew chapter uh, number 18. And I want you to look at something that happens here. The Bible said in Matthew chapter number 18, beginning with verse number 1, said, At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, Except you be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven." And whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea." If you'll go over to Matthew chapter number 19, which is one chapter over, and listen to what happens here in in chapter number 19, verse 13. 
It says, Then were there brought unto him little children, that he should put his hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Suffer little children, and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And the Bible said, And he laid his hands on them and departed thence. There was individuals that brought children to Jesus. Now I'm going to tell you what better for you and I to do today than to bring children to Jesus. What better to bring a child for a parent uh, to bring a child unto Jesus? What better thing, better task for us as adults to bring children uh, to Jesus? The disciples thought He was too busy. But the Bible said that Jesus laid His hands on them. He laid His hands on them. Jesus in chapter number 18 had explained that saving faith was was just like the faith of a child. Of a child. What a story. Jesus showed that children are an example of faith. In Matthew chapter number 18, He said, Except you become as little children you'll in no wise enter in to the kingdom of heaven. The Bible tells us that these hands, that the question was asked, what are these these wounds in thy hands? The very hands of Jesus had taken and He had embraced those children. You know, one of the greatest things, and and I I love to see uh, children, I love to be around kids. And I love to see the excitement on their face. I love to see uh, the children as as they're learning. It's amazing. If you want to see something, get a blessing. Uh, Come around on Wednesday evening and see these kids uh, come through here in a one and look what they're learning. As they're being, I mean, they'll sit down and, and they can quote verse after verse after verse after verse of the Word of God. I'm going to tell you what, Jesus took little children up in His arms and He embraced them. I'm glad today that those hands of Jesus, those hands of Jesus are welcome. They're a welcome to all that will come unto Him. You know what Jesus said in one place in the Gospel of John? He said, He that comes to me I'll in no wise cast out. Aren't you glad for the extension of those hands that invites us to come to Him? Aren't you glad that one day, sometime, somewhere in your life, those hands were extended to you and welcoming you unto Him? Aren't you glad for those precious, precious hands? Those hands embraced those little children, those hands that embrace you and I when we come to Him. Notice something else. Over in the Gospel of Luke chapter 19, there was a man that is very familiar, and we've probably studied this uh, from a child, uh, concerned this man's name was Zacchaeus. And the Bible said this. Notice what happens. The Bible said in Luke chapter number 19, And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was of little stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass by that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him, and he said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste, and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down, and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. 
And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I've taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for as much as he is also a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Think about these. These hands are extended to sinners. Zacchaeus was probably one of the most hated people of his day. He was a tax collector. Most of what he took, he took by wrong means. Anything that he collected above what was owed to the government, Zacchaeus kept. And the Bible said that Zacchaeus was a rich man. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was. And the Bible said because of Zacchaeus was of little stature. He ran and went up a sycamore tree, got up there to see Jesus as he passed by that way. When Jesus got there, Jesus extended those hands to Zacchaeus. The Bible said that Jesus came to the place, He looked up, and He saw Him. And He said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. The hands of Jesus were extended to Zacchaeus. And I'm thankful today that His hands are still extended uh, today uh, to you and I. This wealthy, wicked tax collector had come to see Jesus. And Jesus called him down uh, from uh, that sycamore tree and saved him. You want to know how I know that he got saved? Look at what happened with Zacchaeus. The Bible said in verse number 8 that Zacchaeus stood Uh, and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I've taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. Zacchaeus left that day a changed man, a saved man. Jesus extended uh, those hands unto him. Let's look. Let's look at some things in Scripture Let's start, first of all, in chapter number 8 of Matthew. Listen to this. Concerning Jesus extending His hand, the touch of Jesus. In Matthew chapter number 8, the Bible said when He was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed Him. Behold, there came a leper and worshipped Him, saying, Lord, if Thou will, Thou canst make me clean. Jesus put forth His hand and touched Him saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. What happened? Jesus touched him. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And if you go down in that same chapter, the Bible said in verse number 14 that when Jesus was coming to Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever, and he touched her hand, and the fever left her. And she arose and ministered unto them. What did he do? He just simply touched her. And the fever, the Bible says, and the fever left her. In chapter number 9 of Matthew, uh, verse number 29, well, verse 27, it said, When Jesus uh, departed thence, two blind men followed Him, crying, saying, Thou Son of David, have mercy on us. And He was come into the house, the blind men came to Him. And Jesus said unto them, them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto Him, Yea, Lord. Then touched He their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus straightly charged them, saying, See that no man know it. What did He do? He touched their eyes. And the blinded man, men could see. In the 14th chapter, of the Gospel of Matthew. If you'll look down in the 14th chapter, if you'll look down in verse number 34, the Bible reads like this. It says, When they were gone over, they came into the land of Gennesaret. And when the men of that place had knowledge of Him, they sent out into all the country round about and brought unto Him all that were diseased. And they besought Him that they might only touch the hem of His garment. And notice this, And as many as touched 
were made perfectly whole. What a touch. What a touch. The touch of Jesus. In the Gospel of Matthew chapter number 20, the Bible said as they, in verse 29, as they departed from Jericho, a great multitude followed him. And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside, when they heard that Jesus passed by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou Son of David. And the multitude rebuked them, because they should hold their peace. But they cried the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou Son of David. And Jesus stood still and called them and said, What will ye that I shall do unto you? They say unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be open. So Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight, and they followed him. The seventh chapter of the Gospel of Mark, beginning with verse number 31. The Bible reads like this. And again departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, he came into the Sea of Galilee throughout the midst of the coast of the Acapolis. And they bring unto him one that was deaf and had an impediment in his speech. And they beseech him to put his hand upon him. And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers in his ears and he spit and touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and saith unto him, Epitha, that is, be opened. And straightway his ears were opened and the string of his tongue was loosed and he spake plain. Just the touch. Just the touch the precious touch of Jesus. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 7, the Bible gives us Luke chapter number 7. It is said, It came to pass the day after, in verse 11, that He went into a city called Nain, and many of His disciples went with Him and much people. And when He came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, He had compassion on her and said unto her, Weep not. And He came and touched the bier. And they that bear Him stood still. And He said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. And He delivered him to his mother. Those hands are still reaching out today. Those hands are still reaching and giving that touch today. I thought about in the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 15. And I thought about when the prodigal son had went into a far country and spent all that he had with riotous living. I thought about when he came to himself. He's down in the hog pen feeding the hogs. And he came to himself. And he said, How many hired servants of my father have bread enough and despair and I perish with hunger? He said, I know what I'll do. I'll arise. And I'll go to my father and say, Father, I'm not worthy to be called your son. Just make me one of your hired servants. And he came, and the Bible said that when he was a great way off, his father saw him. And he ran to where he was, and he fell on his neck, and he kissed him. You know what I could picture in my mind? I could picture that father running to that son with those arms open wide and wrapping those arms around him and drawing him close unto him. You know, that's exactly what Jesus will do for us. You think about the, t- the touch of Jesus. You think about how that He extends those hands to you and I. And regardless of where we are, regardless of what we've done, regardless of where we've been, how that those arms are extended and those hands are reaching out. And boy, have you ever just felt Him just draw you close to Him? It's just like He takes those arms and those hands, 
and just wraps them around you. Nothing, absolutely nothing can compare with the touch of Jesus. Nothing. Nothing. What are those wounds in your hands? If you'll study out in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the end of all four Gospels, you'll find what happened. Those hands that, yes, had picked up those children and had drew them close to Him. Those hands that were extended to sinners. Those hands that had given a touch. Blinded eyes were opened. The dumb were able to speak. Those hands that had even touched as a young man, the son of a widow, was dead. Those hands had even touched that bier that he was upon and raised him up. Those very hands went to a place called Calvary. Those very hands were stretched out on a wooden cross. Those very hands, there was nails that were driven through those same hands. Those very hands experienced such excruciating pain on Calvary. Those very hands that were stretched out on that cross for all to see those very hands that loved so much, that cared so much, those very hands still love and still care today. Boy, one of the greatest pictures, if we can ever grasp this, one of the greatest things that ought to be a motivation to you and I as a child of God is to really look at Calvary. See what took place on Calvary. See what He endured, the suffering. If you'll go back into the book of Isaiah, chapter number 53, read Isaiah 53 when you get home. It gives us a description in Old Testament prophecy concerning the suffering of Jesus. He suffered so much. Those holes, those wounds in His hands was a, were a symbol of the suffering that He endured on the cross of Calvary for you and I. I think about Thomas. You remember after the resurrection of Jesus and how that the disciples were together, Thomas was absent, and Jesus appeared to them there in that room. And those disciples, they told Thomas, says, we've seen the Lord. He's alive. And Thomas said, unless I can put my finger into the prints of the nails in His hand and thrust my hand into His side, I will not believe. And the Bible says eight days later, they were assembled together and this time Thomas was with them. And Jesus appeared to them right there in the midst. And He said, Thomas, reach hither thy finger and put it in to my hand. Thrust your hand into my side and see that it's me. Thomas says, my Lord and my God. Jesus made this statement. He says, Thomas, because you've seen, because you've seen, you've believed. He said, blessed are those that'll believe though they've never seen. I've never seen those prints of the nails in His hands. I've never seen His side. I didn't see Him with these eyes on Calvary. I didn't see the crown of thorns about His head. I didn't see how that the Roman soldier had literally skinned Him alive as they scourged Him. I didn't see any of those things, not with these eyes. But you know what? I have seen it 
with an eye of faith. The Word of God describes to us the suffering that He went through. The payment for our sin had to be made. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. The payment for sin is death. And Jesus died a death, not for His sin, but because of our sin. And He paid that price that you and I couldn't pay. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 21, it says that He hath made Him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God through Him. You see, Jesus never sinned, but He paid the price for our sin. And today He still extends His hand. He still extends the invitation to every man, woman, boy, or girl. I don't know your need here this morning, but if you've never been saved by God's grace, Jesus paid a price for you that you couldn't pay. He paid a price for every man, woman, boy, or girl that we could not pay. He died. He suffered. Those hands are evidence of what He went through for you and I. And He invites you to come. Those hands of salvation are stretched out, inviting every man, woman, boy, or girl to come to Him. And I tell you what, many of you, as I said earlier, many of you in this building, you've experienced a miracle this past year. Some of you, people have scratched their head and said, there's no way. But you know what? You're here. And God's left you here. There's been a miracle that's taken place. I think about this past year, 2014, and what we've experienced in our family, what we've gone through in our family. I'm going to tell you what. The Lord's been right there through every bit of it. And he's still, he's still there today. Those hands are extended. Let's stand our feet. I don't know your heart this morning. I don't know what your need might be in your life. Maybe today you need a miracle in your life. Maybe today you need that touch that only He can provide. Come to Him. Come to Him. Maybe you're here this morning, you're in need of that salvation. Come to Him. I can't save you, but the Lord can. And He wants to save. The Bible tell, tells us that He can save to the uttermost those that come unto God by Him. The Bible tells us He's the only way. The only way. Come to Him. Bobby, I want to ask you if y'all would to come. Give a time of invitation. You want to come and pray this morning. Come and pray. Come and pray. I'm the reason. You're the reason. For those wounds in His hand. For His death on Calvary, we're the reason. This altar's open, invitation's open. Would you come? Be obedient to the Lord. Page 345. I hear the Savior say.